What if I told you that one of my favorite smartphone lineups for the past four years at least is not what you think? This is the Find X5 Pro, what Oppo calls as a product designed to empower every moment, and what I'm gonna call as one of 2022's best phones that most probably flew under your radar. In the past, this Find series found a lot of spotlight given how it would defy the establishment, from being the first at many display innovations we enjoy today, to full-blown pop-up cameras, to a better implementation of periscopic zoom lenses. There's never been anything conventional about these phones. Maybe the the fact that the last two generations were more regular flagships than anything is why each didn't get the same spotlight, but particularly with this new model, I've learned over the last six months that we shouldn't really judge a book by its cover. I'm Jaime Rivera with Pocket Now, and let's dive into our extended review. Yes, I don't blame you for calling out all the similarities between this Find X5 Pro and its predecessor, but again, there's more here than meets the eye. Maybe one of my favorite elements about this phone is its design. I know it's a common thing for companies to get creative about how they fit all their specs into a mobile package, but Oppo is one of the few that knows how to do it better. Instead of the usual pronounced edges and overdone camera humps, this Find X5 Pro is all about ergonomics. There's not one single sharp corner in this phone up to the point where it all blends seamlessly even with the primary camera lenses. This is also one of the few companies using a much stronger sheet of ceramic to protect the back and which even provides a case in the box that feels like an extra color thanks to its shade of matte. It's not necessarily the lightest phone given its size or choice of materials, but weight distribution is good enough to not make that a problem. It's actually a really pleasant phone to hold and use for prolonged periods of time. Also, it's one of the few companies left that ships its phone with a charger that's faster than almost anything else out there in the box. The second thing that I've always liked about the series is their choice for displays. Listen, it's taken years for competitors to catch up with things like the contrast ratio provided by this panel. At 6.7 inches diagonal, 1300 nits of peak brightness and 120 hertz in refresh rate. It provides the expected flagship experience along with fantastic colors and with detail being second to none. Doesn't matter what angle you're viewing from, the experience is crisp and the combo of dual stereo speakers makes content consumption pretty fantastic black though, but I'm not exactly sure going. Obviously, six months later, its internals are no longer the latest, but this is one of the few companies that actually knew how to tune the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 to its potential. Then there's the fact that while RAM is conventional, starting storage was not. This is probably the highest amount I've seen for a base flagship, along with a pretty large battery, crazy fast charging, the latest Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, 5G, IP rating, etc. Now, I think a bigger story is where Oppo is going with the software. I've spent the last couple of weeks testing ColorOS 13 beta, and I think it's a pretty nice approach to Android 13, along with proof that timely updates remain a priority. Oppo calls this aquamorphic design, and its main focus is to be concise and simple. From the system fonts to the typography going larger for improved readability, to the added contrast of the iconography, the design language overall is far more cohesive. The notification shade now provides larger and more accessible buttons for the controls you use most, and that actually extends to the home screen. I think one of my favorite features is large folders, simply because we all access certain categories more than others. I also love the new approach to the always on display where even third party applications like Spotify can be controlled in ways that would almost seem like if the phone was fully active. It's actually a smarter way to take advantage of the LTPO2 technology baked into this display, which goes as low as one hertz in refresh rate. 
Other essentials like the multi-screen connect feature we saw in ColorOS 12.1 now has extra enhancements to see more windows for added productivity. In addition to supporting more file formats, you can transfer between your device and your PC. Heck, there's even a kid's space now, which is self-explanatory, and even a meeting assistant to prioritize data to applications like Zoom or Google Meet when you're on the go and connectivity is limited, which also simplifies banner notifications to avoid distractions. And yet the Google essentials are also addressed. The Google feed remains at the left of the launcher. You can choose if you prefer all applications in the home screen or the app tray. All security and privacy elements Google announced are here. And yet Oppo adds extras like ways to auto pixelate content in screenshots automatically along with Oppo's own private safe encryption. Again, this is not just another take on Android but really a pretty good looking design language with added perks that goes beyond what most Android phones are offering. The combo of hardware and software leads to a positive user experience overall. It's pretty quick to navigate through menus and even six months later and while using a beta, performance is very reliable. Sure, you can charge this phone to 50% in 12 minutes, but it sips on power so well, I'd easily call this a two day phone. Phone calls are also great, and so it's its reliability in remaining connected to data as well. Now, one of the main selling points is this phone's camera, mainly because it served as Oppo's showcase of the Maricilicon X Image NPU, which did most of the heavy lifting in this phone's computational photography. At first, I'll admit that I was a bit worried because the spec sheet wasn't really as amazing as it's been before, but once you pull these results to a computer, you understand why this extra chip is here. See, the main reason most phones heat up during heavy photo sessions is because processing good photos takes up a lot of CPU and GPU power. This phone does not have that problem. And then match this with the Hasselblad color tuning and you get a lot of character in the results from these cameras. It's almost like a permanent filter over the photos that gives them a lot of personality. And this happens regardless of the focal length you pick. From the bokeh and close-ups to how it balances colors, it handled every task pretty well on my book. Now where you'll notice Maricilicon most is at night. Usually even the best flagships will tell you to wait one or even five seconds holding a camera steady while it picks up different exposures, but not this phone. This is seriously the fastest phone that I've used for night photography like ever. Sure, I did notice some inconsistencies in color after I started using the beta, but that comes with the territory. Overall, the amount of detail this phone pulls in low light is pretty awesome. Same case with selfies and portraits where, again, it's sparing you the need of very expensive filters on your shots and handles skin tones and detail pretty well, obviously after you disable all the beautifying modes. Seriously, the only thing where I'm mixed with this phone is in video. I mean, the primary camera does pretty well in most cases, which is to be expected where stabilization and dynamic range is flagship territory in every way. And then there's the fact that this phone does night video better than a lot of phones that I've tested. Really, my problem is to continue to see 1080p selfie video in 2022 at a time when social media video is priority. Sure, all you really need is 1080p, but having 4K gives you so many more options for framing that it's unfortunate that Oppo hasn't figured this out. The resolution on the selfie camera is here, so I'm not exactly sure what's the holdback. To conclude, what can I say? I've spent years admiring what Oppo has done with the Find series, and this phone is no exception. Sure, I would have loved another trick to serve as a wow factor, but then again, I think most consumers value a balanced experience more than the gimmicks, and that's what this phone excels at. Hardware is more premium than others. Software provides extra functionality you'll wish other OEMs brought to Android. The camera is also well-tuned, colorful, and faster than anything else that I've tested. Though, yeah, I can't wait for Oppo to figure video out. Bottom line, nearly six months later, I still have no problem in recommending this phone. It's aged pretty gracefully in both looks and software, which most other companies still fumble with. Sure, it's not what I'd call affordable, but I'll forgive it given the perks and the extra starting storage. If Oppo was trying to find a balanced formula to launch on a phone, 
I think this is it, and yeah, pun intended. Let us know if you agree with my assessment in the comments down below, and while you're at it, follow us on social media and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. You can also follow me on my personal handles to see me come back to try out my all-time favorites. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I'm Jaime Rivera, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.